So I've been in the shoe game for about 15 years now, and this is one of the sneakers that I got in the past. I had for a long time, got rid of them, and I kind of wish I never did. So in today's video, I'm going to be giving you guys a short story, a little bit of history, a partial review, and all the other opinions and thoughts along the way explaining as to why I got rid of this sneaker and why I had to get it back in my collection. And if you guys didn't know by now, my name is DJ, and this is The DNA Show. Hey! So when you're a sneakerhead and you have been collecting shoes for a long time, some kicks simply come and go along the way and you just don't hold on to everything. With this shoe in particular, I picked these up when I first started collecting shoes and I was in love with them. And for some reason, a lot of people didn't really like them that much. And that was completely fine with me because I had loved the sneaker, I loved the design, the colorway, the materials, and all those other fancy things, which we will get into a little bit later in the video. But overall, at the end of the day, I was in love with the sneaker and I still love it to this day. But there was one big problem. They were a size 12 and my foot was growing and I no longer fit the shoe anymore because now I'm a size 13. So from my freshman year to my junior year in high school, I went from a size 10 and a half to a 13. And as I was building up my collection over that time, I realized I couldn't keep everything because I simply couldn't fit it anymore. But with these in particular, I held on to them even though I knew I couldn't fit them because not everybody liked them. And sometimes when it comes to a sneaker that not everybody really cares about or it's not a hyped up collaboration, it just simply falls under the radar and it's kind of hard to find later down the line. So I know by now you guys are probably asking the question, what shoe are you even talking about? I'm talking about the Pacific 7s. Now I know this isn't a shoe for everybody, but at the end of the day, this is a shoe for me and my collection and I am so happy to have these back. So before I go along with the story, we got to talk a little bit about the history because you know we always got to cover that here on the channel. Now this shoe in particular doesn't have too much history, but one thing that we do know is these came out on April 15th of 2006 and retail was 130 bucks and I'm telling you right now those were definitely the glory years compared to the retail prices these days so to give you guys a short glimpse and a blast from the past let's talk about a couple Air Jordan 7s that came out around that time that were also very iconic and a lot of people attached on too we had the Olympic 7s the Cardinal 7s the Chambray 7s the Citrus 7s and another one of my personal favorites the women's Toro yellow 7s those were extremely fire and I definitely had those in my collection as well until I grew out of them. I was very sad when I let those go. Hopefully one day I can find another pair. I don't even know if they made a size 14 and a half in women's but that Jordan 7, that colorway, extremely fire. So there's two reasons to why I sold these back in 2013. Reason number one and this is probably the biggest reason as to why I did it but during that time I had kind of went through like a midlife crisis type thing. There was a lot of stuff going on in my life in 2013 and I just needed to get rid of all the extra stuff, all the extra things, and I knew I could get money from it and it was gonna be a valuable thing and I could use it either way and I could use it to something else. So I kinda knew like, okay, what can I get rid of that I just don't need anymore? And I, I just literally sold every single pair of shoes in my collection that was not a size 13. I didn't keep it. No matter how hard it was to get, no matter how valuable or cheap it was, no matter uh, any, no sentimental value, you name it, I just got rid of it. Every single thing that wasn't a size 13, I got rid of. So knowing that my pair from high school was a size 12, I had to get rid of them. And the day that I got rid of that shoe, I told myself it's probably gonna be kind of hard to get simply because when I had posted them for sale, I realized not that many people were even selling the shoe, which meant if I tried to get the shoe later down the line, it's probably gonna be really hard to get, especially in a good condition because typically the longer a shoe goes on and it gets worn and worn and worn over the years, if you can't find a good pair that's been lightly worn or dead stock, they're probably gonna be beat up and tore up. I mean, this shoe is what, 15 years old? So a few years ago, I kind of went on a soft hunt, just kind of opening my eyes back up and looking for different sneakers that I got rid of in the past that I might not have been my size and different things like that because I have easily owned over a thousand pairs of shoes in my collection and been sitting on a bunch of different things over the years and kind of this may come and this might go type thing and oh, maybe I'll get that back later because I got three different versions of that retro or whatever it may be. So with all that being said, I told myself, hey, let's see if the shoe actually retros first. It's been about 10 years since the shoe came out and you know what happens with Jordan brand. Nothing is safe these days. So I waited to see if the shoe would be retroed. 
I didn't see any signs of the shoe being retro. And then I saw that this was the year of the seven coming up and I was like, okay, maybe they'll be retro in it. I didn't see any news of the Pacific seven specifically being retro. That's what kind of put me on a deeper hunt over this past year. So I was scrolling online kind of here and there, just searching every now and then. And then I ended up coming up on this pair right here. They were worn a couple times and they are extremely clean. There's no separation or cracking and the shoes and the outsoles and the uppers look really, really nice. So I immediately put an offer on these. The dude got back to me. I ended up picking these up and I'm telling you right now, again, I am a very happy camper. I ended up picking these up for 225 bucks and I actually ended up selling my old pair for around the same price eight years ago. So to think that I was able to go all this time removed and still be able to get this shoe back in my collection for around the same price and know that, hey, maybe one day if I decide to get rid of again, which I don't plan on anytime soon at all, but if I ever do, I could potentially sell them for more or the same amount of money and I still be good. I know the Jordan 7 in particular is not every single person's favorite sneaker. We know there's a lot of hype around Jordan 1s and now <laughs> Jordan 2s with everybody else hyping them up. But either way, we know that the Jordan 7 isn't on the top for everybody's list. And I completely understand that, especially with a colorway like this that's a lot more unique and doesn't really go with every single outfit and, and not really bulls related and all this stuff. So I get all those other things. And we have definitely seen other random retro Air Jordan 7 colorways, but these ones in particular, the leather, the pebbled leather that they have on the upper, the quality, the colorway, and just the overall just materials and everything when it comes to this shoe, I think they are extremely dope. I think a lot of people are sleeping on this shoe. And when people see this shoe in hand, they're like, wow, these are actually really nice. They may not like the colorway, but they still appreciate and respect the quality of the sneaker. And I think something for me that really stuck back in the past that I still kind of carry today is when it comes to sneakers, I'm always looking at the quality. And these really stuck on to me back 15 years ago. And when I got these in the mail and opened them out the box, I was definitely excited to touch them again. So this is a short story of a new edition that's been re brought back into my collection. I don't, how do you, how do you say, is it a new addition to the collection or is it like, I got them back? I don't know. You guys tell me the exact wording for that because I, I, I can't say this is my first time having the shoe. There's been plenty of shoes that I've like, oh, I got it, got rid of it, got it again, got rid of it, got the retro, got rid of it, got it again, got it. I don't know. There's just a bunch of different things. So over the years, we have these fluctuating cycles of like, oh, I'm gonna have all these and I'm gonna have all those and I don't really need these anymore, but damn, I wish I got it back. Like it's just all those type of things. So this is one of those sneakers. I really, really appreciate these a lot. I'm excited to add these back to the collection. Plan on holding on to these for the long haul hopefully they don't go crazy and just fall apart on me or anything like that the shoe is already 15 years old so i could definitely see something like that happen which is another reason as to why i got rid of all my og sneakers with the i'm talking about og og stuff and the face box stuff and the different eras like that because everything from the 90s and the early 2000s i mean just think about it like it's all falling apart you want to collect it you want to love it you want to appreciate it but then you got to worry about putting a new sole on it and a new midsole and all these different things like that so that was kind of the reasons why i had got some of the older stuff out of my collection and kind of tried to stay in that last 10 or 15 years range of sneakers so hopefully these stand the tale of time and we shall see in the future but either way i'm happy to have them back and add them to my jordan 7 collection again i hope you guys enjoyed this i look forward to giving you guys more stories and videos about all my sneakers and explaining how i felt about it then and now and how i got it back and all those other different things like that just kind of giving you guys a video journal of my collection and different parts and bits of it and telling short stories along the way so i hope you guys enjoy this i appreciate you as always all right y'all i'm out Yo, if you enjoyed this video and wanna grow your collection or make extra money on the side, I built a VIP mastermind that will teach you everything that I've learned about growing my sneaker collection over the past 15 years. This will also give you access to the DNA fam in my VIP community where we talk about investing outside of sneakers. And don't worry, if you don't plan on joining the VIP community, it's okay. I also set up a private DNA fam community that gives you access to all the behind the scenes looks from the studio and multiple chances to win free sneakers and gear from weekly and monthly challenges. So all you need to do is click on the link down below in the description or the first link pinned in the comment section. That will get you set up and into the community. I'm excited to see you guys on the inside.